Hey, hey, morning. It's uh, it's camera trap setup day yet again. And uh, I'm in the woods not far from where I live at this point. And uh, I got a couple of game trails that I've that I've seen that I want to put the camera trap on. So I thought I would kind of walk you through what the camera trap is and what it looks like because I get a lot of comments on like pictures that I'll put on Facebook or whatever. And, and people will be like, what kind of trail camera is that? You know? And um, you explain it. And the next comment is, you know, what kind of trail camera is that? So we'll try to clarify. This is a really popular game trail by my house. I had a trail camera on that tree and I got a cool video of a mountain lion running right through here one time. So we're gonna get up to some BLM land not too far from here and, uh, and set up. This is about the line where the sheep fire came down and burned. Like that's my property that way in the green. This was a fire line right here. And uh, you can see the burn over there. So I was, I was realizing after the wolf photos, um, I got a black bear in that same camera trap set up that would have seriously been like a bucket list photo. I was so happy to see that black bear and the photos came out amazing. And then I just like completely ignored them mostly because the wolf was so, you know, epic. But those two critters almost rounded out my north you know northeast california hall of predators if you will and uh i was realizing i have really good high resolution sweet photos of a coyote um a uh bobcat i've got now the black bear i've got the the wolf, which has got to be the hardest, right? And uh, I don't have really sweet high res photos that I really love of a mountain lion. Now I've got mountain lion photos. I've, I've seen two in person, photographed two in person, which not a lot of people can say. Uh, I've gotten really good trail camera photos of a mountain lion, but nothing that's just that, that sweet, sweet photo. The ones I've photographed in person, one was at night and one was, uh, really obscured by heavy brush and, uh, just enough mystery there to make me want a better picture. So. I'm just looking for a good spot to set up, but I think it's fair to say that that's my hope, my target for the next, you know, few months of uh, of camera trapping. Some people have asked about where I uh, try to set up my camera trap, and I try to stick on National Forest or BLM. I use this Onyx mapping and. Uh, um, you know, you don't want to be on private property. To get to this spot, I've got to walk through my neighbor's property, um, off of my property, not too far from home, but it's a uh, BLM border by National Forest, and uh, pretty much good to go anywhere up in here with uh, with your camera. So this area has got a bunch of these like, like deep gullies where a stream is cut down, and most of them have, like if you see over there, some kind of game trail like traversing the hill 
when animals don't want to drop all the way down the gully, they'll sort of traverse, you know, across. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna get over there. I think it's set up somewhere on that little section of trail and uh, see what we get. All right, this is where I wound up. The gully I was in is like down there. That trail came up and it kind of comes right across this little shoulder. And uh, I'm gonna kind of see the, the flat area. The trail is like right there coming this way. And sweet spot because I got this wood I can mount my camera to. So that's the hope. Killer critter posing right there. It'll look good. Okay, so let's answer the question. Give you a little camera trap tour here. Are you ready? So when people say, what kind of trail camera are you using? Um, this is a trail camera, all right? They're little, they're one piece. They have a infrared light bank, a little camera lens, and then some motion sensors. And it's all built in and it's one shot and they're usually lower re resolution and nighttime videos are, or pictures are um, infrared, black and white. Um, what you're seeing with my photos, like the, the wolf recently, bear, bobcat, those kinds of photos, the fox that I got a while back, is a camera trap. So the simple trail camera, and this is all camera trap, right? So start with the housing, this is a, like a knockoff brand Pelican case from Harbor Freight. It's called an Apache case. And uh, you can see my Starbucks cup visor that I made right there. This is just gaffer's tape. I took a piece of PVC plumbing, like a three inch to four inch PVC adapter. And I used fiberglass and epoxy to uh, mount that inside the a hole that I drilled in the case. I put a 95 millimeter filter, uh, just like, Use silicone to mount that in so the whole thing's weatherproof. And then cut out the foam for my, my stuff, right? So the camera that I'm using is this little Canon Rebel T7. And I chose the T7 because it's got the, uh, the bigger 23 megapixel sensor of some of the bigger cameras. But it just doesn't have all the features. It's about four, 450, 500 bucks. And uh, it's got everything that you need. So the basic 18 to 20, whatever, 18 to 55 millimeter kit lens is, is really all you need for uh, this kind of close range stuff. So the stuff that makes the camera trap, a camera trap is from a brand called Cam Traptions, who uh, they're based in the UK and they do some awesome stuff. The, uh, the trigger is this guy. So the Cam Traptions trigger has some settings you can change on it these little doors are like blinders they'll flip up so you can kind of direct it a little bit but under here it's got like uh dip switches right and you got to read the manual like backwards and forwards to learn how to use it but uh, over here you got some sensitivity settings how many exposures you want light settings and uh in the center of that thing is the infrared trigger right power switch on the bottom. It's easy stuff once you kind of learn it, right? So I've got mine set where um, when it senses motion, all right, you can set it to trigger your flashes and your camera, right? So as long as you have this thing set the right way with the dip switches, when this senses motion, it will send a wake up signal to all three of my flash units. So pause real quick, my flashes, I just mount them inside these PVC tubes. I put a little uh, acrylic at the end, just glued it in there for light. So cap goes on that and they're weatherproof. The Nikon SB28 speed light, like 20 year old flashes, they're the, uh, the best for camera trapping. Everybody kind of agrees because they have a huge long standby time. They run on just four double a batteries and uh they'll stand by for a long long time each i have three of these flashes right they're all mounted on a cam traptions receiver and those are all operating on channel two right so there's multiple channels you can set these things up at but the way mine works is 
when the trigger senses motion, it sends a wake up signal to channel two. And all three of these flashes wake up, but they don't flash. Then it sends a wake up and fire signal on channel one. So this receiver, which is usually sitting right in there, is plugged into the camera, right? Camera wakes up and fires. When the camera fires, there's another transmitter in the hot shoe of the camera that's operating on channel two. And that tells the flashes to fire. So that's how the whole thing works, right? This guy says, hey, flashes, wake up. Hey, camera, wake up and fire. Flashes, wake up. Camera wakes up and fires. Flashes are already awake. So the cool thing about that setup is you can use Nikon flashes with a Canon camera and everybody, everybody communicates. So pretty sweet. These guys are uh, external external battery packs, basically. They're pretty cool. The black part is just a, a D battery holder that I got from Amazon, right? It comes just with these red wires. I, uh, I wired on these plugs that I also got from Amazon, and those guys, they plug into the, the external power on those, on those triggers. So these things are all just, they run on like two, double, two triple A's and they'll last like two or three days in the field, right? So I basically, these D battery holders, I, uh, I put these double A adapters in there. So you basically got three double A's for every D, right? So now instead of two D batteries, this is six double A batteries. Double A rechargeables are easy to come by, right? So I recharge a bunch of double A batteries, and now instead of running on two triple A's, each one of these is running on six double A's and it'll uh it'll last a long time in the field I can get about three weeks look check this out literally while I'm out here setting up my my camera trap this message rolls in to my messenger account for my photo page it says hey Randy what was the name of the trail cam you got the wolf picture like Literally that happens all the time. So Now I'll just be able to post a link to uh, this video. Maybe and explain that it was not one of these It was one of these whole different deal All right, so this is kind of the the trail it's a couple different forks down there, but they kind of come together right here and then continue on that way so my cameras there so if you're an animal moving down the trail this way Right now, up here you've got my trigger on the tree with one flash unit above it. So that would be picking you up like here, right? There's another flash unit right there. Camera's there. Another flash unit right there. So my focus point is right about here. So this is you looking at the camera. And uh, should work pretty sweet if the right critter comes along. All right, so we'll see. We'll come check that every few days. It's pretty close to my house, so 10 minute walk and I can take a peek. So hopefully we'll get a kitty cat. It'll be fun, but uh, I bet we'll get a deer. There's a good chance we'll get a bear still. Um, yeah, critters are out. Fall is busy, man. So my hope is that I can get a an active spot there. So we shall see. Yeehaw. Till next time, huh?